across the street from your house. Yes. This is Washington Park in Prairie du Chien. Uh -huh. I love it. This is our fishing pier, which is in use all the time. Across the way, our marinas, they're all fairly new and filling up fast. And the little one on the right, the other pier, is a kayak pier. I love watching all the boaters and the boats. Oh. And sometimes come over and fish. Huh. Well, I think the Eagle Gardens, they have lots of weddings and birthday parties over here. And uh -huh. A lot of people that just hang out and enjoy it. I come over here with Edna a lot just to sit and listen to the birds. So Andrew Jackson proposed to his wife here? Yeah. Yes. According to local history and the plaque on the side of the building. Uh -huh. uh, this is the East Channel of the Mississippi. The East Channel. The only thing between us and the big barges is that little island right there. Okay. A supper club is a place where your whole family can go and be welcome and have wonderful food and drinks. They have live music on weekends, but it's really all inclusive. Everyone's welcome. You can bring your grandma and your grandkids. I'll be happy. Make sure you get the flowers because we're very proud of our hanging baskets <laughs> in this town. And our standing ones. I wish I had yeah. the green thumb. We also have two, not just one, but two quilt shops in town. And this one on the right, the picket fence, also has homemade chocolates. Oh. It's quilts, fabrics, and chocolate. <laughs> Life doesn't get much better than that. That's pretty much it. Yeah. That's your whole town? It's, well, it goes another block. That's my gnome home. We <laughs> had to cut down a pine tree that was bug infested. So I had the tree cutter guy cut the top at a 45 degree angle and I had to argue with him about it. And I said, I want to make a gnome home. He said, you can't do that. This is Wisconsin. And you're going to put a little door and yep, stuff? Yep, I'm working on a door and a window with a night light in it. And that'll be it. so cute. Yes, and then some flowers around the bottom, I think. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. And the lilies just popped up on their own once there was some sunlight hitting the fence there, which yeah. is a nice bonus. So where am I at and who am I talking to? Hi, I'm Mary Rudix and Sisters on the Fly. And imagine my surprise when traveling grandma got out of her van yet last night. It was so exciting. You never know what's going to happen. It's like a treasure hunt. I know because on Sisters on the Fly, I just go my, by my name. I know. And I've been a fan of your travel channel since you started it. It's so full of good tips and hints and stuff. I love it. Well, it's great to meet a subscriber. Thanks. I also travel in a minivan, the same model and everything. So we also have that, and I learned a lot of my tips from your YouTube channel, which is great. And we're here in beautiful Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, the corner of no place. But it's so beautiful, and it's so nice to have good company. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to go out to her garden now. Yes. This is lavender from Fredericksburg, Texas. When I moved up here from Texas, I brought some of my favorite things, and it just, everything smells so good with it. Mmm. And then my little herb garden and roses from Aldi. But the most Wisconsin part of my garden is my rhubarb. I, I love your old-fashioned clothesline. <laughs> when I bought the house, they listed that as an eco-friendly uh, green clothes dryer. <laughs> yeah. The, the previous owner offered to take it out, and I said, "If you do, eco-friendly clothes dryer." <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm green. Yeah. Everybody here hangs their clothes on. I love it. So you've got rhubarb. Oh, yes. nice. This is my rhubarb patch. I've already canned up about 15 quarts of rhubarb jam and syrup and just Wow. So you're a canner, huh? I am. Nice. And we love rhubarb. It's full of all sorts of good things. And the rest of my garden's over here. Right now it's a little messy because the peas just finished. But now the cucumbers and squash are coming in. Uh huh. This one, this is my wild garden. It has garlic and onions and apparently some squash got in there somehow, probably from compost. I just wait and see what comes up and then I eat it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the handy way. And then my cucumbers over here are just doing really well. 
I also have grapes against the fence that they're uh -huh. just starting. But look at this mess of I like your little hoop house here. Yeah. Now, do you cover that in the winter or do you need to? Um, it depends. I can. I have covered it with a kind of translucent tarp and used it as a greenhouse. But I don't really, I can so much and dehydrate so much, I don't really need to have produce in the winter. How are your winters here? Do you get snow? We do get snow and we get cold, but not nearly as much as the rest of the state. We're between the Wisconsin River and the Mississippi River and it creates a little microclimate, which is wonderful because storms and things tend to go around us. Oh, that's not always, perfect. Not always, but yeah. The winters are nice and they're, they're perfect for outdoor sports. Lots of ice fishing here and um, cross-country skiing. And they cross-country ski right down Main Street, which is really cool to see. <laughs> you can just sit on your porch there, huh? I do. We, the whole world goes by eventually. Oh, this is my got cucumber some... patch, oh. which was the compost pile. Oh, wow. Well. I know. You just grew out of that? Judy. Yeah. Oh, you have a lot of little treasures there. Yes. These are roses from Aldi and strawberries. It took me three years to clear this fence off of the Creepin' Jenny and the Virginia Creeper. Uh huh. I left a corner to remind me how bad it was. <laughs> this whole fence is going to be covered with wisteria and climbing roses eventually. Oh, that'll be pretty. It will. Oh, and you've got more stuff over yes, here. Yes, this is going to be completely a butterfly and bee garden, which I'm really looking forward to. I mean, that's still a work in progress. I keep planting things, then I forget where I planted them, so I have to wait for them to come up. Yeah, so but, these will all bloom in the spring, huh? Yes, there's peonies, hydrangea, um, allium, Great. lots of things that were at the grocery store they were going to throw out. And then there's some corn, which is from the bird seed, that I <laughs> let it come up and then I let the squirrels eat it. Ah, oh. this is a wisteria tree, uh -huh. which I had never heard of before, but I got one. So you were telling me last night that you do something special with your tree and um, nuts and squirrels and yes. stuff. What do you do? Our big trees have squirrel nests in the tops, and I love tree squirrels. They, I, they tickle me. So we have babies all over now, and I take peanuts and I hide them in the bark. <laughs> Every place the bark's pulled out, even on the little elm tree here, I'll hide a peanut behind the, the bark and watching the baby squirrels run around the tree looking for the peanuts and the look in their face when they find one is just wonderful. It's better than TV. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, it's Christmas. There's a peanut. Nature's entertainment. It is. It is. And for peanuts. They work for peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a half acre for a yard, which just, I love it. I ah. love the green here. I love the people here. Here's my other gnome home. Oh, okay. Let's it's take a look. An ash tree that was killed by ash borer. And this one I actually bought a little guy that I will be sinking into the tree eventually. Oh, I see. You've got it cut already. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Isn't he cute? He's yeah. trying to escape. Really cute. When I first hung him, I had a problem because the baby squirrels would come over and they'd swing on this like it was some sort of a game. Uh-huh. Cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go take a look at your van. Okay, let's do that. All right, so your van is dark gray. It is, it's called Steel Gray. It's a 2017 Dodge Caravan Touring with the fold away seats. I love the stow and go, it's the best yeah. thing ever. I did add some, some cool skull things to the car <laughs> and to the interior. Just okay. so it wouldn't look too much like a granny van. Okay. Even though it is. <laughs> and of course we have Edna, my pug, who is also my service dog. Okay, oh, that fits nicely there. It does, and I can put my feet on it if I, you know, want to really stretch out. Yeah. She's just, she's safer in a crate when we travel, and she's not a good traveler. Uh -huh. She wants to drive, so it's better for everyone if Edna is crated. Yeah. It also fits perfect at the end of my bed, and I can use under here for storage for things like an extra extension cord, mm -hmm. you know, little things like that. My reusable grocery bags, which are very important to have with you when you travel. Yeah. Extra tarp. <laughs> and of course quilts, because I quilt. So you made your quilt? Yes. Made nice. 
And this is, you can see, the actual interior. Okay. I do have covers and screens for all of the windows. It came with screens that cover part of the window, but I made screens that hold on with magnets. Oh, I'd like to see those. Them. Everybody's interested in screens. Let me see that way that you constructed your bed, though. My bed is a $22 shelving unit from Walmart. And I, how many of those do you have? I have, it's one unit, so there are four shelves okay. with legs. Oh. I cut the legs down to fit the bed, so they're 14, it's 14 inches tall to here. Uh huh. Which is perfect for me because I need enough room to get up because my knees are bad. Yeah. Which is why I can't sleep on the floor. So now, you, do you have these a little shorter than the front because it dips down a little bit? Actually, I made the back longer than the front so that the bed is at an angle. I have GERD and I need to sleep at an angle with okay. my head raised. Okay. And I used to put lots of pillows here. Mm -hmm. And then I figured out it made more sense to just slant the bed. Yeah, yeah. And I use it for naps a lot. When I'm traveling, I'll pull over and just take a 30-minute cat nap so yeah. I don't, you know, fall and asleep. And tell me a little bit about your mattress. The mattress is one of the three-fold... Um, beds from Amazon. Okay. It folds up into three pieces so it's all it's easy to take out and carry. I did cut a little bit off the end inside this to fit the crate so okay. it didn't go up on the crate. Yeah. But it works beautifully. It's easy to take apart. I can break down the bed, put it in the garage in less than five minutes if I need to use the van as a cargo van. Oh, okay. Which is nice. And it only takes up about this much room for storage. The size of one of these. Yeah. I also have a instant tent. When the cold okay. instant tents under here, mm -hmm. because if I camp someplace more than a day or two, I'll put a tent up and I put my fine facilities mm -hmm. in there. Do you put your bed in the tent too, or I are you not, just just the toilet? Okay. And any just for your stuff. privacy then. Exactly. And to stand up to dress. Okay. So I'll put my clothes in there and the porta potty. Yeah and use that for my auxiliary building. Okay. <laughs> Plus a lot of um, campgrounds now, they won't let you That's true. van camp. So I have a tent, so I'm tent camping. Right, exactly. And in state parks, it's just handy. Yeah. And it holds your space if you have to go into town or do things or you wanna go hiking. That's true. I kinda of like it. Yeah. Plus with the 14 inch height, there's room in here for- Lots of stuff. stuff, yeah. The other tip I have, are these Aldi freezer bags. These cost $6.99. Uh-huh. And I use them for everything. I have one of these is all of my clothing. One is all of my bathroom stuff, including the big stuff like, um, you know, towels, shampoo. They slide in together underneath. They slide on top of each other. They're easy to grab one and go. I have one that has all my food in it. Mm-hmm. And I do suggest you get different colors because I have ended up in a shower room with food. <laughs> oh no, I can see that happening yeah, actually. Just, they weighed the same, it felt right. Yeah. But, and it's perfect for like dry goods. I travel with ramen noodles because I'm not always a grown up uh -huh. and I can always get uh, boiling water. That's true. And they're perfect for things like that. And uh, this is an extra one. I always keep one extra. I also love Aldi. Yeah. And it fits right underneath here. Oh, that's nice. And they slide, which is nice. Yeah. And there we go. Great. And this is my entire kitchen. I oh, let's it, see what's in your kitchen. I have it so pared down. Um, the only appliance I bring is a 12-volt kettle. Okay. Because if I can have coffee in the morning, I'm good for the rest of the day. Oh, wow. But in this... It's just, you know, the silverware. Yeah. My, also an Aldi find. Uh huh. It opens up really big. Like oh, that's nice. Like ounces. Yeah. And closes. Very Things compact. Like it is. Hair things. Yeah. Because you can't eat with hair in your face. <laughs> Until Aldi just had some things on sale. I love these little sandwich things. I like peanut butter and honey sandwiches, and if you put them in a Ziploc, they stick to the Ziploc, uh, and they're a mess. In these, it's real easy. I like peanut butter and banana like Elvis. I do, too. And that's that's actually my entire kitchen right now, mm. except my coffee cup. Yeah. And as you can see, everything just, it fits just perfectly. Yeah, so you don't have a dresser. You have everything I stored don't. underneath here. Yes. I have a dresser. 
but I took it out because I wasn't using it enough. Okay. I, it's easier for me to grab an Aldi bag. Mm hmm And of course, I have my office. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cute. It's got the little legs. Yeah. And I sit in one of the chairs, and it fits in here perfectly. Very compact. It is. It, it works and you have well. a little... A little hitch too. Yes. So you have a Trava trailer too. I do. Do I you have, use that or? I have a 1981 Burrow that's been in every state but Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I've been all over with that, but at the moment it's so much easier to take the van. Okay. That the Burrow yeah. is kind of a guest house <laughs> right now. Yeah. I also one of the things you do that I also do oh. is I keep this area open so I can pop that seat up if I need to. Okay. I do have to use a stool to get in and out because I have one prosthetic knee and one that wishes it was. Oh. And on my old one, I actually drilled a hole with a piece of rope in it. Oh, that's so, a good idea. So you don't I, have to bend yeah. down and pick it up. Well, and I tied it to this. It was mostly so that if I was stealth camping, I could pull it into mm -hmm. the van after me. Easily, yeah. And I tied it to this handle so I always knew where it was. <laughs> Yeah. Because I had dropped the rope a couple times. That didn't make sense. But somebody stole it. Uh. But there's the stow and go seat here is actually clear with this setup. Yeah. I can pop it up. Yeah. And I do like that. Yeah. And I travel with lots of water because that's the staple for me. Yeah. I used to have a five gallon jug, but it's just easier for me to lift one gallon. Mm hmm. Yeah, I just refill mine. Yeah. I really like having the reflectics around mine too. It just keeps it so cool. It really does. And you I do could probably make a little bag of reflectics. Or you know what? You could put it in one of those Aldi bags would probably keep it cool too. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And I do have lots of reflectex. I have it to fit all of the windows. I have it for the front. Yeah. Let's see your screens. Um, you said you had different screens. Yeah, I don't know where they are though. Okay, that's they're okay. Not in the van. I think they're in the egg. All right. But That's okay. They're just, they actually just cover the outside and have magnets. So there's, okay, so you just set it that way. Yeah. Okay. I don't have the ones like yours that are permanent, although I may have soon. Yeah, they work pretty good. They have really, they really do. Yeah. I must have 50 yards of tool. Yeah, in they were, you know, I've left this open and it's still pretty taut. Yeah. I like that idea. I really yeah, when do. you do it, you know, you don't really even have to put the other, um, black tape that I said mm -hmm. on the last part the electric tape. you don't have you don't you totally don't need it that's cool yeah. yeah I like that it's a good use for tool I have a ton of it from when I was making dresses for dogs yeah I need a lot of wedding dresses for dogs yeah and sometimes pumpkins. I forget about it and I leave it open and the wind just comes in and, and it hasn't destroyed them yet so <laughs> that's, that's the you know yeah that's the real test. and you know if it does it's easy enough to fix that's true that's true and underneath the bed, from here, is another place I can access. You can see the Aldi bags and stuff. Yeah. That's shoes. You have a lot clothes. of storage there. There is and a lot. And you can access it really well because mm -hmm. you don't have anything on this side. Well, you right. have a crate, but you but can that always actually, move that. And that goes into the tent mm -hmm. if, if yeah. I'm tenting. Very nice. Yeah. I rather Comfortable. love Comfortable. For stealth camping, you really can't beat a minivan. No. You can't. I yeah. wish I could stand up sometimes, but yeah. I can come out here and do that. And you have boats? You take that on the river there? Yes, or? yes. And this tows tows our little boats uh -huh. really well. We have a 12 foot and a 17 foot flat bottom. And you've got them on the side here? I do. You want to see? Sure. Yeah. Another advantage of having a half acre for a backyard. Yeah. We have lots of storage room and a pop-up at the end. Oh, okay. Wow, you have lots of toys. Yeah, we have two boats, the pop-up, and then I still have four or five campers in Arizona at my old house. Mm -hmm. Waiting to be restored. Yeah. They're going right. to wait a little longer. <laughs> so, what are we going to do today? You said we're, you made some plans for yes, us. Yes, we're going to go to Pikes Peak State Park in McGregor, Iowa, right across the Mississippi, and see the best view of the, of the Mississippi River and Wisconsin River okay. that you can get. We, uh, I want to go to the farmer's market. Yes, and the farmer's market, and I think there's a car show and like an art show thing. So well, we're let's do get all going. All the things. All right. Let's go. So I've never seen a river looking like this so low. Water right now is at seven foot three inches, and it's wow. usually right around eight or nine. During the flood stages, it was hitting 24. 
That's the Wisconsin River over there coming down from Green Bay okay. to meet the Mississippi, and this uh -huh. is the Mississippi. Yeah. This is Pikes Peak State Park in McGregor, Iowa. Nice. Pretty cool too. I bet they're both together. This is together. very cute. It's called a cricket, huh? It is. Let's go past it and, and see the other side. And you just tow it and then you open the top. Yeah, kind of like a... Oh, here's another one. And there's another. That's a car top. But, but check out the oh. cricket from this side. This is the side I think is cool. That's the door. So it's not... You don't have to oh, climb yeah. in from the back. Uh -huh. Um... I test camped in one at a dealership. I mean, I just laid yeah. on it and stuff, and it's incredibly roomy inside. This is a cute little town. What's the name of this town? This is McGregor, Iowa. Uh -huh. It's an adorable town. It's a great walk-in town. This Alexander Hotel here, the steaks in here are to die for. They're all local. They also have a restaurant, a like, Mexican restaurant. Uh -huh. Lots of little galleries. Keep getting your little dog in the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like they have a little car show going on. Yes, classic car day and fun run up the Mississippi. Ah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it is cool. Classic cars are a big thing here, which I think is wonderful. People love their history here, which is why I moved here, for the history. Yeah. And then we're out of town. This is an old riverboat town. The riverboats used to stop here. As we saw at Pikes Peak, it was the first place that was settled, this area, as it came up the Mississippi River. And there Fairfax it is. Prairie du Chien is the second oldest city in Wisconsin after Green Bay because of the French voyageurs. There she is. We're getting ready to go on a river cruise. I can't remember whether we were on the old one or on the old one. The green and red. Oh, there's little houseboats. This is where you come to catch catfish? Yes. Take your boat out here? Yeah. The farther back, the better. Uh-huh. Right away. Especially when the water's low. Yeah. It's so pretty. Very pretty. It's like a Disney uh, forest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that ride on Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be Mary Ruth's next project. She's going to make a little gnome. Village over there, and they come out with her boat and bring all her little gnomes. <laughs> there is an eagle's nest. Let me come around a little bit more. There it is. They're already fledged. Yeah. There's a little eagle. It's a little baby, isn't it? It's a baby. Yeah. Baby colors. Yeah. They love the bed change. Yeah, they have woods. The Wakuda Avenue there in Prairie Duchesne? Mm-hmm. The Wakuda house on Indian Island here is a nice new house, but because you can't build new, they kept one wall from the original 1802, I think, cabin and built this house around it. So it still counts as an old cabin, but it's like a feature wall of old rotting wood inside a beautiful modern new cabin. Smart. That's that yellow house that we just yes, passed. Yes, the yellow house. They got a special dispensation for it to grandfathered in. That's thinking. Yeah. That's where we were at Pike's Peak up there earlier today. barges with soybeans and corn yep. and then they um, travel down the river. Down there they fill them with other things and bring them back full and unload them here. Hmm. This is where 
they fill the barges. Soybeans and corn. So he got together with some of his raptor group. They grabbed some American falcons and chicks out of the net before their eyes. So those numbers tell how high the water is from the bottom of the bridge. If your mask is taller than the water level, which is pretty low right now, you better not go through. Your house is so cute. So this is basically your front yard. <laughs> yes, it is. I have a beautiful park in my front yard. And the river. And the Mississippi River. Yep. Or more accurately, the San Ferial Island Marais, which is French for swamp. They're tiny little water plants that only show up during... Like little water summer. lilies, kind of. Yeah, in micro. And they're all attached to stems, huh? Yep. And they call this fish snot? <laughs> Classy. Yeah. Can you see how clear the water is under them? Yes, yes, very clear. Well, I think you picked the perfect place to live. I do too. It only took three years to find it. Yeah, it's just beautiful. It is about 18,000 miles of drive. That bench up there on the hill is yeah. underwater. Oh, when you had the flood? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have I, certainly enjoyed visiting you. It's been really special. I so enjoyed having you. I mean, <laughs> you, you talked me into staying another day. I love it here. I absolutely love it. I found my forever home. Yeah. It's a rare and wonderful thing. I'm glad. Yeah. Now let's hit the road. Next <laughs> time we'll have to do like a week. Yes. Yes. Then we can really explore the great. Yeah. Area. We'll go kayaking and we can go all up that. and down the river. There's a lot of cool little play Indian places to, uh -huh. to explore. Yeah. Perfect. All right.